Hi, and welcome to another tips and tricks. This is going to be a follow up video, the last one where we talked about roundabouts. Let's take a look at roundabout interchanges today, some basic types and some upgrades. This is going to be a bit more theoretical talk since building all this is quite easy. And we covered most of it in the last video and some other videos as well. So here we can see a very basic type of a roundabout interchange. This one is from an older part of my city. So no details. And also the connections to the roundabout are the slow 90 degree types without the better on and off ramps. Again, more on that in the previous video linked in the description. As you can see, this is a very simple interchange type. This particular one is quite small and only has the highway and two other roads connected to it. So it's basically a four way interchange. More connections are obviously possible, but the roundabout needs to be bigger. Otherwise, some traffic issues might appear. This interchange is popular in real life. Here we can see one example of it from the United States, where the roundabout is above the highway. Main advantages of this interchange are quite obvious. Small footprint, only two levels, uh, relative simplicity and some increased capacity and smoother traffic flow because there are no traffic lights, compared to, for example, the diamond interchange or the single point urban interchanges. I'll probably do videos on those as well sometime in the future. But just like the regular roundabout intersection, the capacity is limited. So this interchange is not suitable for higher volumes of traffic. The capacity can be increased a bit by making the roundabout larger, which obviously increases the footprint and might get a bit awkward, especially in urban areas. That's where the double roundabout or sometimes the teardrop roundabout interchange comes in handy. I don't have one built in the city, so let's take a look at this real life example instead. It's basically a large roundabout that is squeezed like this under or over the highway. This design can probably only work as a three or four way interchange. A similar approach is the dumbbell interchange, which basically consists of two separate roundabouts on each side of the highway. Again, I don't have one built, so let's just take a look at these examples. This type of interchange is super popular and can be seen in many different shapes and sizes. Usually the two roundabouts are the same size, but might even be completely different. Also, this design allows the interchange to be more than just a four way interchange. Again, depends on the sizes of the roundabouts. As we can see here, one roundabout can even be switched for a regular intersection, which makes this a hybrid between a dumbbell and a diamond interchanges. Usefulness of these various modifications depends on traffic situation, of course. The intersection is probably used here because the traffic going down to the, direc to the direction from the highway is lower than to the direction of the roundabout. Now, the basic roundabout interchange is usually built on two levels. But if the traffic going straight through the interchange is high enough on both of the intersecting roads, a three level interchange is probably needed. This is the one example I have in my city. As you can see, I built the third level for the trams, so they are not slowing down the roundabout traffic. Later, I upgraded the lowest road so that cars can use it as well. In real life, this interchange is usually built much larger and usually between two highways or motorways, uh, somewhere outside of the urban areas. Some examples here again. This one is from the Netherlands, I believe. And now in this one from the Czech Republic, we can see it connects even more than four roads together. The roundabout can be on any level, lowest, highest or in the middle. Uh, in here, one part of it is actually on a different level than the opposite part. And finally, this is an example of a two level interchange from the UK where they definitely like their roundabouts. So you might even see smaller roundabouts inside a bigger roundabout like this. Also in here, we are connecting more than just the two roads together. Let's now talk about the last variation of the roundabout interchange, which may or may not be called a roundabout interchange at all, because it's pretty much just a three way interchange and a separate roundabout connected after it. But I find it extremely convenient for a very simple multi way highway exit. So let's talk about it. This is the very first interchange in Rockdale. I pretty much started building the city from here, as you can see, it's a regular four way roundabout for no reason whatsoever. I build it with the three lanes, which is useless and 90 degree road connections. Again, refer to my previous roundabout video. One way to look at this is that it might be called a half dumbbell interchange because we cut the other roundabout. 
Another way to look at this is that this is a regular roundabout interchange where we just took the roundabout and put it next to the highway instead of right over or underneath it. By doing this, we increase the number of possible connections to the roundabout. This particular one is built so that the highway ramps don't go to the opposite side of the highway at all, because I wanted to save some space for the railroad down here. This particular build might be a bit unrealistic, because it requires some ramps to be connected to the left side of the highway, which might be against norms in some countries. But like I said, this interchange is really old, I was not concerned with the realism that much back then. For city skylines though, perfect. Let me show you an example of a real-life interchange like this, and explain to you another important characteristic of this build. This one is from the United States again, and notice the roads that are going to the roundabout from the opposite side, these. As you can see, they cross each other, which means that the traffic that wants to go back to the highway going to the left needs to cross the traffic arriving to the roundabout from the right. Let's go back to the cities again, and here we can see those uh, same connections highlighted. As you can see, they do not cross, at least not on the same level. They cross at the point right here, but it's a multi-level cross. Again, in real life this may or may not be realistic, but for city skylines it adds so much more capacity to this interchange type. Also, don't be confused because I used the three ramps in here. The left and the middle ones are both for leaving the roundabout. It's just that the direction going left needs to connect to the highway before the tunnel entrance and therefore must be slightly looped. This is another example from the direct opposite side of the downtown area, where I built pretty much the same thing. In here I only have two ramps going to the roundabout from the highway, because of much simpler highway placement and no tunnels on it. But again, don't be confused now with this connection here, it's not relevant to the actual construction, it's only a bypass for a neighboring interchange on the left side. And yet another example, this one built in a really small place, so I had to be a bit more creative, one connection on the left side of the highway again, so realism of this one is again a bit questionable. But nevertheless, quite nice looking and much higher capacity than some simpler highway exits. I consider these three together with the American real life example to be one interchange, meaning that the highway part and the roundabout part are custom designed to work together. But you might also use an approach where you just create a regular highway interchange, four or three way, and just stick a roundabout right on the side of it. That's exactly what I did here. This is a modification of a double crossover merging interchange and a roundabout in a four-way configuration. Using a roundabout right after a highway exit like this is a really nice way and a simple way to split traffic into multiple directions from the highway. This is a real-life example of something very similar. Here we have a three-way trumpet interchange with a small roundabout on the side of it. Also notice the road markings on this roundabout, very minimalistic. And just for completion, let's take a look at this last roundabout interchange that I built in the city. This one is a modified basic type. It's probably again a bit unrealistic because now we have ramps going from the inner lane of the roundabout. On an ordinary roundabout, traffic going to the highways needs to cross traffic entering the roundabout from the opposite avenue road. These ramps in the middle are kind of improving that, as we can see here. And that was all. Hopefully this little overview of various ideas for roundabout interchanges was helpful to you, and you might start building your own very soon. Also, it's always a nice idea to look at maps of real places to then build something similar in city skylines. Anyway, that was it for today. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.